What if you didn't have to be a marketer to be brilliant at marketing? Hey you, I'm Sarah Grace, CEO of Victress Global. Look, the world is marketing to women using masculine strategies and it does not work. Using my unique V2 marketing system, I've been able to help so many entrepreneurs escape slimy, salesy marketing strategies, spend less time at the computer, and grow their businesses in a way that lets them take Fridays off. No joke. So stick around. I'll make sure you know exactly how to tackle marketing in a way that feels awesome. And P.S. Some of these episodes come from live trainings inside my private Facebook group. Search for V2 Marketing on Facebook and you can join me live every single week. Let's rock and roll. So thrilled to be able to be here with Courtney and she has got an incredible business, but let me orient you to a couple of things that are happening right now. Um, I have three things I want you to know about as we get started with this hot seat. I'm going to wait for Courtney to pop on so I can invite her. First, this is something you can apply for. You can apply to be here, share the stage with me, and you and I get to dive deep into what those burning questions are that you have specifically in your business. Um, some of my mentors have been some of the greatest blessings in my whole life, and this is a space in which I feel like, hey, I can start to, to give back and to orient and to, and to really clarify, because the reality is a lot of us as entrepreneurs feel like we are stuck, and that is actually not the reality. The reality is, is decisions need to be made, and we feel unclear. On, on how to make those decisions. And so that's what I'm here for. I'm here to talk with Courtney about her business, about the decisions that she is making. And if you want to be part of this, you can apply to be here. I try to do about one a month, that may change um, a little bit. Uh, but if you want to apply to be there, you can go below in the link and you can actually apply for this and ask questions. And I will tell you really upfront that I choose the people to come on um, based upon the questions that they are asking. Um, so think about what a really, really valuable question would be to ask here in the hot seat of something you're really struggling with and we will dive in. So that is the first announcement. I'm so glad. Second, if you are new here, we've had some great growth in the group recently. Um, welcome. My name is Sarah Grace. I'm the CEO of Victor's Global. I've got an incredible team working behind the scenes to help you guys really, really get into the space of growing a business on less than 12 hours a week. And we really aim for a six figure um, or more big business in less than 12 hours a week. And part of the way that we do that is we specialize in number one, helping you build the back end of your business, uh, which is called APM On Demand. And we'll have a link for you on how you can participate on that at any time, any place, anywhere. Um, we'll have a link for you there. But we also help through a lot of these free trainings, these guests, and something that we call V2 Marketing. V2 Marketing um, is a complete marketing experience. So often we go into marketing and we only focus on what I call V1 Marketing or Victor Marketing. And that is based upon all the, the, the foundational approaches to marketing. And the, the, the deal is, is that V1 Marketing is incomplete because it was created by a male dominated business scheme. And the men in the business world have blessed my life in incredible ways. I am married to a wonderful man. Um, men have been a wonderful, fulfilling part of my my, my faith and my marriage and my own father and my father-in-law, all those things. And in the marketing world, it has been largely male dominant, which means V1 marketing, when you approach it from the, from the side of foundational marketing, it is incomplete. So here in this group, we are introducing things in relation to V2 marketing, which means what do you do when you actually market from a women's perspective? What about, what if your customers are largely women? Are you actually making those significant differences when you market to women in order to help grow your business and therefore grow your impact. Um, so that's really why we're here. So if you're new here, welcome. I am so thrilled that you are here. So a couple things you want to watch for, the link to APM On Demand if you feel like you're back, the back end of your business is a hot mess, that's going to be for you. Um, second, look for the link below where you can actually apply to be here on the hot seat. And third, open your, your mind to the idea that there may be a different way for you to market your business and reach women based upon the V2 marketing strategies. Okay, we are so glad that you are here. Um, Courtney, are you ready? Let's dive into the hot seat. I'm really, really careful about the time to make sure I respect your time, Courtney's time, um, everybody's time in the room. So we will have exactly 25 minutes to bring Courtney here on camera. Okay, I just sent her a request. Let's get her on here. On here. Everybody, if you are here live, like cheer Courtney on because this can feel really, really scary sometimes. <gasps> there she is! I'm here. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? I am so good. I am so good. And literally 40 minutes ago, we had no internet. And I was oh, like, no. 
dear Lord, please bless. I can meet with Courtney today because I love you. I know you. And I love the questions that you were asking. And so selfishly, I'm like, we have to get her on here today. And we officially have internet. So that is our welcome present to you today. How are you? Good. It's are summer, you? so kids. It, I know. We're going to have kids and popsicles and probably a football being thrown across the back. <laughs> and that's totally okay. Welcome to running a business in the summer. Um, can you, I just want to like dive in. I don't want to waste anybody's time. Sure. Can you take quite literally less than a minute. Tell people what you do. Okay, I am an artist. I create art specifically. I focus on illustrations, um, custom portraits, and just some side things for fun. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. And what one of the things that you talked about that I, I just, screamed with total delight that you asked this question is you I have seen your stuff I have held your stuff and you really are an you have something beautiful to offer and you have a variety of things to offer and a lot of different avenues in which you could offer it so there's no doubt those of you who are listening there's no doubt that Courtney is in a market that is selling okay art sells um game sell um, coloring books sell, like she is in a market that is selling. And that can often lead to a couple of different feelings. Number one is, well, then why is mine not selling? Okay, like, am I stupid? That's like the original thought that comes to my mind is like, am I stupid? Why is mine not selling? Or second, it's sort of like, I'm so behind. Like, why would anyone ever buy my product when they can go to Desert Book and get a product or they can go to this Etsy shop and get a product? And so it turns into this like, let's make Courtney doubt herself all the time so that therefore her gift and talent never gets into the world. Does that feel pretty accurate to what you're experiencing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And if there's anybody watching live or listening on the podcast, like comment and say, oh my gosh, I've been there. I have so been there. Okay. And so the question that you asked, and I'm going to actually let you add to this a little bit before I answer it and just Explain where this is coming from is you said this you said how do I overcome the fear of failure and the fear of success so I can make the change from a hobbypreneur to a business tell me where this is coming from so I have been what I tried to call a business since like 2017 and um, I feel like I'm still at the same area I'm still beginning I don't have a a good website I don't have a good email list and um so I'm I'm like afraid to give it up because I know I could do really well with it but I'm afraid to do really well with it because there's a level of responsibility that comes with that um so I feel maybe like I'm not prepared enough to, to keep going I don't know if that makes sense it makes total sense and I think listening or watching is like nodding saying oh, been there or I am there or like they are linking arms with you knowing what this kind of an experience feels like so let me follow that up um, with a question when we start talking about the fear of failure most people can resonate with that and then you brought in this really beautiful equal ugly stepsister to failure and that is actually the fear of success and some people are like that is so not a thing that is so not, and until they're there and you're like oh Oh, and let me, let me just, because we're in a V2 marketing group and we specialize really in helping women, let me just clarify this really, really carefully. Because if Courtney, and I'm going to make some gender role assumptions here, and please let that be, for everyone listening, let that be in the, in the world of marketing and gender stereotyping as it is not on political stance or religious affiliation, anything like that. We're just going to make some assumptions, okay? So Courtney is married, and Courtney, if your husband decides that he is going to work on a more extensive project, then he just needs to make that decision, and the assumption is, is Courtney will fill in the gaps in order for him to expand and grow, okay? That is the gender stereotype. Um, there's actually nothing inherently wrong with um, a marriage, you know, one taking care of the other, and there's a beautiful balance there. The challenge comes is when you as the entrepreneur, particularly the woman in the relationship, is you feel like there's not 
a choice in the matter, meaning I am always the one that is responsible for making sure the kids are not only fed and clothed, but thriving and, and knowing Jesus and doing all these things. And what does that look like when all of a sudden my commitments start to include clients and memberships and publishers, all those things? Your brain has to go there because your husband has you as the assumed role of carrying those responsibilities and you don't have anyone to assume the role for you to expand. How accurate, inaccurate, I don't wanna put words in your mouth, that feel for you? Feels pretty accurate. <laughs> okay, okay. So it yeah. feels accurate. And so this is not where we're gonna end the call because that would be a disaster and we would just leave everybody hanging, right? <laughs> The reality of what you are facing with the fear of, of success is success feels big. Success feels like more time. Success feels like things within my calendar that I have to commit to and show up to, right? Like I'm here today with you at one o'clock on the dot um, and that's a commitment that I'm keeping, right? And so you start to define success by, okay, I need to be, it's going to take me more time and it's going to be more committed. And then we start to have this moral dilemma because what happens when you, Courtney, start to spend more calendared time with clients and publishers and commitments? What happens in your life? Um, less time with family and the housework goes out the window. She's yet yeah, you're starting to do a cost analysis. Absolutely. She got really specific saying that that equals less time with my kids and that also equals the housework is going down because she doesn't have that that kind of imaginary figure to rely on to be able to have that kind of that kind of balance there so when it comes to a fear of success let me um push you for a minute okay in order for your business to grow and to be successful how much time do you feel or perceive you will need to spend in order to make it a six-figure business per week? Um, I mean, it's depending on how I've priced, I'd probably do 10 to 20 hours a week at the minimum. I mean, with art, it's pretty easy to make prints and diversify that way. So I don't see it taking all week, but more Good. time currently spend. Fantastic. And I'm taking you down a really specific road right now. So hang with me with this. So she's saying 10 to 20 hours a week. So let's shoot high. Let's say it's 20 hours a week. Okay, so you've got 20 hours a week. And if you were to spend 20 hours a week, you were saying one of the fears is like the house. The house is going to absolutely fall apart. That's largely your responsibility right now from what I gather. So the question then becomes, how much time would it then take per day for you to upkeep on the house? And we could all laugh at that because we are in the middle of summer. But let's get real for a minute. How much time per week would it take you to keep that up? Uh, probably about 20 hours. <laughs> Okay, so all of a sudden, Courtney is seeing that she needs to spend 20 hours on the business, and then she needs to spend 20 hours keeping the house clean, okay, because you've got kids, that's the reality of it, dishes and vacuuming and, and bathrooms and all those things. So all of a sudden, you actually fully committing to a business turns into a 40-hour work week problem, which you probably do not have. Okay. And the reason that we're doing this so organically with everybody in the room is because it's really important to see what comes out of your heart instinctively. Okay. Because all of a sudden you're saying, I'm ready to go big. I, w I actually want to go big. I'm not sure if I'm ready, but I want to go big. And all of a sudden big is being defined by 40 hours a week, which also means that's 20 hours of cleaning, 20 hours of work. And when are you actually going to like hold your kids and read bedtime stories? Right? Exactly. Okay, so we've got this big daunting bear in the room that is like, of course, Courtney is afraid to go all in because who would go all in if it meant no bedtime stories with the kids, if it meant you were gonna spend all your extra time cleaning, and if there was no guarantee it was ever gonna hit six figures? Who would do that? What a raw deal. What a raw deal. So because, of, so I'm trying to give you some peace around the fact that like, no wonder you haven't, you haven't go full in. 
Okay. Now we are going to take a slightly different road. Let's flip this really quick. Okay. One of the other um, elements of the fear of success actually comes from something that I call ego. Okay. But let's soften the word a little bit because ego uh, can bring up some real scary things inside. Okay. Let's soften it and let's talk about perception. Okay. So when you look outside at your, your ward or your neighborhood or your in-laws or and your own parents or your spouse or your kids growing up, um, when you start to think about, I am scared to be successful because I might be perceived as, how would you fill in that statement? I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> probably, I guess I'd be afraid to be perceived as not caring about what we're supposed to care about. Um, I think that's probably the big one. Oh my gosh, did everybody hear the S word? Okay, everybody heard the S word. Okay, this is such a good moment for you, Courtney, because all of a sudden you are now in a position where you get to make a choice and you get to take your power back. Okay, this is what this is going to look like. So right now you're scared to really dive in and commit because it turns into like a 40 plus hour work week with no bedtime stories, right? And now we're starting to approach it from a really, really emotional level where we're saying, and if it's successful, yeah, I might make six, six figures, but that's not okay with me if that makes me not care about the things I'm supposed to care about. Like, that's also not worth the price to me, okay? And let me just share a 90-second version of how I see you, okay? I see you in this moment because I remember I was reaching for a goal in my business a couple of years ago, and it was actually to be able to be invited to attend and kind of keynote a certain event. And really wanted to do it. And so I did what any good business person would do. I started to investigate and go like undercover to say, how did all these people get invited to do this? Like, what did they do? How did they get there? How did they get it? What's the time frame? Like I started to like make it really scientific. Right. And, and beyond that, I actually started to notice more about their personal lives. I started to look at their marriages. I started to look at their faith. I started to, cause I wanted to find someone like right? So I started to look in all these things and specifically looked at the women who had accomplished it. And I, and I really started to see some patterns. And here were the patterns that I saw. Most were divorced, okay? Or they didn't have kids, okay? Or they were way younger than me, or they went into massive debt in order to build the company that got them to where they got, okay? And all of a sudden, I turn around from having that as a goal, and I was like, it's impossible, it's absolutely impossible because I, there is no kind of invitation that is worth it for me if I'm going to lose my marriage, if I'm not going to have my kids or not have relationships with my kids, or if I'm going to put my um, family into $500 worth of debt. Like it just wasn't worth it to me. And you are in a similar scenario here where you are saying, yeah, that's cool, Sarah, that you specialize in the six-figure world. That's really, really cool. I'm really happy for you that we work 12 hours a week. And I am unwilling to give up my faith. I am unwilling to give up my marriage. I am unwilling to give up my, um, my bedtime stories with kids. And that keeps you stuck. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. So we, we are now going to move over to the solution end of it. But what are you hearing so far about where you are stuck? Um, definitely my uh, thought processing and... Um... mindset is the big one yeah yeah this whole idea of like you are because you are a woman and responsible for so many you are constantly weighing pros and cons and the options and right now you don't see a whole lot of pros probably other than fi a financial boost in pursuing what you're doing do you think that's accurate yeah okay <laughs> good so let me put you on the spot as we start moving through, what does this look like to actually solve when we have a fear of success? Okay, because we can understand the fear of failure, okay, is understand the fear of success. And it really comes down to the S word that you said. So the S word that you said was supposed to this, okay, supposed to this, okay. And what I want to bring to the table is a rather simple exercise and yet hugely eye-opening. 
Okay. So when you say, I'm worried that if this works out, that I'm going to be perceived as someone who doesn't care about the things that I'm supposed to. Okay. What are the things you are supposed to, I'm putting air quotes around this. What are the things that you are supposed to care about? Uh, kids, house, <laughs> um, being healthy and church callings. I'm sure there's a lot more. <laughs> Okay, right, again, we're going for very raw and real in this moment. So Courtney is saying, okay, church, and I've got house, and I've got, you know, kids, and I've got these commitments, and health, and wellness, and all those things. And what you see is your decision of, for sure, a 40-hour-plus work week is not going to allow you to care about the things that you are supposed to care about. So now let's rephrase. What are the things that you want to care about? that you do care about? Are they the same? Are they different? What do you honestly care about? My kids, my family, making art, <laughs> and having a relationship with God. Okay, I think everybody in this room is like, she's me, she is so me, she is so me. And so now the opportunity is how do we take the things that you actually want to care about with the things, the gifts and talents you've been giving, given and plug that into a path of success? Like how do those become together instead of this like dissonant broken road, like one or the other kind of experience? And let me show you, um, I hope I can kind of walk you through a visualization of how you can approach this differently. Because Courtney, you know the programs I teach, you know the stuff I teach. You have all the stuff at your fingertips in order for you to blow up your social media, in order for you to build a behind the scenes um, machine that'll help you automate all this. So it's not that you're not smart enough. It's not that you don't have the tools. It's not that you don't have a great product idea. It's not that your product isn't selling in the marketplace. Like all those things that normally we would say, oh, it's the product or, oh, it's this or, oh, it's this. You have all the stuff. You have all the stuff. And so right now we're in a position where it says, look, the things I care about are my kids, my faith, and my family. Like, that's what I care about. And instead of viewing the business as the wall that is keeping you from fulfilling those things, what if it became the vehicle? What if it actually became the thing that gave you the freedom to actually be with your kids the way you want to be with your kids? And what if it gave you the freedom to free up the 20 hours a week that you feel like it will take to keep your house in order? Or what if it gave you um, the intensity in your soul and in your drive to take your marriage from good to like soaring to the moon and back? Like if it became the actual vehicle, like what would that look like to you? feel like I'd have more confidence in things <laughs> and yeah that's beautiful that's beautiful it will give me more confidence now let me push you what happens to kids who have a who have a mom who has a boosted confidence level they're more confident they probably feel more loved because if I'm confident and and I'm giving them the love that they need. And What about what happens to a marriage when the woman in the relationship has a boost of confidence? It'd be a lot better. <laughs> Everyone in the room can nod at this. This isn't just you, okay? Everyone in the room can nod at this. What happens to a testimony? What happens to a relationship with God when the woman on the other side of the prayer has a boost of confidence? That would really improve it. <laughs> yeah. <where> it is now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm going to get a little bit sassy here for a hot second. And my poor assistant, Megan, if you have to edit this for content, you're going to have to edit this for content. Okay. I literally 
probably six or eight weeks ago, got a Voxer message from one of my clients that works with me in a group setting. And she said, is it weird to thank you for what you have done to my sex? And I was like, she's Voxering the wrong person, you guys. Because this just got really weird for a hot second, okay? <laughs> I was like, mm, what is he talking about? And then as we settled into the conversation, she is experiencing what you are on the brink of, okay? I love business. I love teaching marketing. It's fun to talk about the victress. It's so, like, all this banner back here is so fun. You know what? You know what I love? I love being in a marriage in which I have space. I love being in a marriage in which I have confidence. I love being able to have kids watch their mom succeed and fail with grace and vigor, right? Like business is simply the vehicle. Some people get it at the gym every day. Some people get it by joining like a, a stroller workout group. Some people get it by taking art classes. Some people do it with girls nights. Some people do it by selling fake nails. Some Like we all as women need a vehicle to become something. Okay, the gospel of Jesus Christ is a really good one, a really good one with rituals and assignments and community and all these things to help us become something. Because Courtney, I'm not sure whether God cares you or I make the six figures and he does care about you. And so it's often on the pathway to aiming for that success and freedom that we actually find him at the most intimate level possible. So as you decide to go in there and you say, look, loaves and fishes, Heavenly Father, loaves and fishes, I cannot work 40 hours a week, I cannot clean the house for 20 hours a week, but I can give it six. I can give it six dedicated hours. Loaves and fishes, here's the moment. And God delivers to those who are hungry, to those who are seeking. He is the unexpected deliverer every day of the week. So as we talk a little bit in kind of in conclusion here about you being stuck in the fear of success and recognizing that the things, we're not going to talk about the things you should care about because that's kind of garbage, okay? The things that you do care about are pure. You care about your family. You care about your kids. You care about your marriage. You care about your, your family, all, your, your relationship with God. Those are things that matter. Okay, so how can we use a business to be the vehicle to expanding your marriage, to expanding your relationship with your kids? It actually becomes the vehicle there. So when I say that, number one, do you believe it? And what changes after today knowing that? Um, I do believe it. Um, and I think from here on out, I I think I need to just, you know, take this next step that I know I need to do and like not, not have that anxiety and fear for what could happen. I love this. And I steal from David Butler to, to wrap up really what you just said. He talks about how fear lives in, fear lives in the future and anxiety lives in the past. It's one of those, but it's flipped, I'm sure. But what I love, what I love, Courtney, what you're saying is you're saying, I'm not going to live in fear because that's where, that, that's like, God's going to take care of that, right? He's already proven it to you, okay? You're here. You're like right here. We've worked together. This is happening. This is happening right now in this exact moment, okay? And so what you can be in charge of is the daily actions that it will require for you to become someone who's a decision maker, for you to become someone who can keep commitments, for you to become someone who can fail and succeed with grace. It, the business will become the vehicle for you to become something. And God is invested in your becoming, not the business is becoming. And he's invested in your becoming. And in, and in closing, it sounds like a church talk, you guys. In closing, what it really boils down to is probably the most wise words. My, my sweet dad, who passed away in 2019, my daddy um, 
changed my life with this statement. Okay, we, we were um, Utah State and BYU football fans, Utah State before I went to BYU. Now we also cheer on the Cougars. And we were watching a game and it was a BYU game and it was down to the wire. Like, why is it ever down to the wire? I'm like, can we just do better in the first three quarters, right? But it was down to the wire and we were just on pins and needles. I'm sure it was against the U because that's how the heart was, my heart was going. And I turned to my dad and kind of in panic, I said, dad, is it okay to pray about football? And my sweet dad, who is like patriarch, stake president, so wise, and just an incredible, incredible man who I miss so much. He turned to me and he put his hand on my knee and he said, Sarah, God does not care about football, but he does care about football players. And I have never forgotten that reminder that I think so often we think, well, God doesn't care about my business, so I'm not going to involve him here. And we stop. We stop there. It's like, there's, there's my God world, and then there's my business world, and there's not this combination. You've got an opportunity to invite him in, to expect the miracle that President Nelson, our own prophet, has said to expect from him, and to bring him in so that you can actually start to experience success within the business, yes, but success within you which will be the biggest driving factor as you move forward. Any final thoughts, Courtney? I don't think so. Thank you so much. Um, I feel so hopeful now. <laughs> well, if that is, all it, that is all it will take often. That is often all it will take to just get the ball rolling. It's kind of avalanche style, that if we can get into a space of belief, it's like, okay, I can move. Okay, I can move. I'm unstuck. And that was really our hope today with your question was to get you unstuck of living in the future of what this success is and what the perceptions will be of what, what are the, all the what ifs that are going to happen. That is already in God's hands. He is to totally aware of that. He doesn't need you to dwell in that kind of arena. He wants to be right here, right you, right here with you right now, performing those miracles, just like the Lord um, and the prophet has promised. So I am so grateful that you have been here. Thank you for your amazing question. And I look forward to seeing what kind of steps you can take over the next couple of months. We'll be watching you um, to see that confidence start to grow. And how incredible that that husband, that those kids, that that ward, that that neighborhood has a woman who is taking her role, her mission, her calling seriously in order to become something that can further his work. I'm super grateful that you are here today. Thanks again for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for being part of Victor's Global. If learning to be brilliant at marketing, a 12 hour work week, Fridays off, a commitment to family, faith, and business is what you're aiming for, I'd like to personally invite you to meet other V2 marketers just like you. Search for V2 Marketing on Facebook and join us for live trainings every single week. As always, if you love what you learned here, share it. This podcast is possible because of awesome entrepreneurs like you. 